Thank you very much for joining me again today, 1 January 2020, and this is our first video of the year. Now, today I've got a very important revelation that was made by Jonathan Moyo yesterday. You can go to Twitter and look at the 24 tweets thread that Jonathan Moyo posted. But what I want to talk to you about today is his revelation that there was an attempted coup on Idim Nangagwa in early November. So according to Jonathan Moyo, Idim Nangagwa is now afraid to leave Zimbabwe because of that coup. So many people have been saying Idim Nangagwa is afraid that if he leaves Zimbabwe, General Chiwenga is going to do a coup on him. But in fact, Jonathan Moyo is saying this is not correct and this is misinformation. The correct information is that in early November, some people tried to do a coup on Idim Nangagwa. These people were discovered and the coup was stopped. And then Idim Nangagwa made some changes, including firing the deputy director of the CIO, Aaron Nepera. And the reason why Aaron Nepera was fired is because he knew about this coup. He had this information, but he did not alert the responsible people in time until things got to a very ex uh, advanced stage. So this is the information that Jonathan Moyo has given. I've also explained that there is an account that is linked to Grace Mugabe, a Facebook account. This account is linked to G40. It's called Shabin Herald. This account normally comes out after a very long time. But when they do come out, they've got very specific information. They've got inside information. Although they pretend as if they're just joking. So today they added more information on that account which is to say the coup happened or the attempted coup happened on 2 November and the people who tried to do this coup are not the same people that tried to bomb Idim Nangagwa at White City Stadium. So these are different players, but they have the same goal, which is to remove Idim Nangagwa from office. Now, Jonathan Moyo, when he was writing his uh, 24 tweet thread, he said that Idim Nangagwa has lost the confidence in the army. So the army has lost confidence in Idim Nangagwa, and Idim Nangagwa has lost confidence in the army. So there is a military problem. And as you know, the army, they favor General Chwenga to take over. But according to this information that we've got, there is a third group that wants to take over. It could be linked to the military, but it's not the military. So I want to give you a bit of my theory on who is involved. So according to my understanding, there is an armed group that is ex-military. This group wants to take over. They want to remove Idim Nangagwa, but... They are not aligned to General Chwenga. Could this group be G40? It's possible. It's possible that G40 has organized themselves and they are willing to take over. They are willing to use military means to take over. But why is it that General Chwenga is folding his hands? He's not doing anything. You remember we've been saying that before Mugabe died, General Chuenga went or had a call with Mugabe where he apologized for his part in the coup. You also remember that I said when General Chuenga came from China, he first of all went to see Sevia Kasukwere. So there could be some discussions going on between General Chuenga's faction and G40. And these two groups could be working together, but are not the same. Because General Chwenga is 
certainly going to be working with the military, the former official military. But G40 cannot be working with the former official military. They could be working with some parts of the military or some retired military officials or some actors within the military. Now, what you have to understand is that every coup has a funder. There is no coup that happens without a funder. Someone that is going to give the money to support the people who are going to do the coup. So let's say there's 50 guys that need to be involved. And each of those guys need to be paid $50,000. So you need $50,000 times 100 or whatever number. So it's not a cheap exercise. You probably need at least $50 million to do a coup. That money needs to be done up front. And the person who is going to sponsor that coup, they need to be given certain guarantees that once the coup has taken place, they are going to benefit, they are going to get contracts, they are going to be in charge of certain things, they can recover their money, and not only the money that they put in, they need to recover 10 times, 100 times more, and they need time. So if someone does a coup in Zimbabwe, they need 10, 10 years in which they are going to be recovering the money, in which they are going to put in place their policies, in which time they are going to make sure that the direction they want for the country is the one that takes place. The problem that we have in Zimbabwe right now is that if you invest in the country, you won't get your returns. So there are many people that have sunk money into Zimbabwe and they've lost a lot. These people want to recover their money. They're South Africans, they're Chinese, they're Western countries, people that have sunk money into Zimbabwe and want to recover this money. So, if someone tried to do a coup and they're not with General Chwenga, then there's a business interest behind it. And this business interest could be South African, could be other countries that are not Chinese. Then there's the group that is aligned to General Chwenga. That group is Chinese. That, why, that is why you see now General Chwenga is in China. They need to strategize. They need to re-strategize after the attempted coup. How do they move on next? Because things have changed. They are new actors. If they're not careful, the Chinese will lose out to this new group. The new group is not going to stop. They are going to keep trying to do this coup. Right. So I, I've given you who is the actors. The question is, who are they going to put into place? Who are they going to put into place if Idim Nangagwa is removed through a coup? So all these actors, they will still need to put in place Nelson Chamisa somewhere. You cannot have any new government in Zimbabwe without Nelson Chamisa they will try to get Nelson Chamisa on their side. So both General Chuenga and the new group, both of these groups, you will see them trying to approach Nelson Chamisa. And also, now I want to just go to the detail of the coup. If a coup was foiled, it means people have been killed. Someone has died in the military. Someone who tried to do this coup is dead. Then someone is arrested you will find out that someone has been arrested who is related or linked to this coup. Could this person who is arrested be Mary Chwenga? Does Mary Chwenga know something about it? It's a possibility. Because Mary Chwenga is a suspect. It, uh, General Chwenga suspects her of certain things. Is this the reason why she's been put in jail? Who else has been put in jail? And... What is going to happen? At what point is the public going to know the identity of this person who was in charge of this coup? Then, obviously, if, if, you, if you look at um, the situation that is there right now, with General Chwenga outside the country, Idim Nangagwa stuck in the country. It means that the government is unstable. There, there, there is, the government cannot move forward. 
the issue of Poland is just a smoke screen. But it's important. The reason why it's important is Poland is Idim Nangagwa's way of showing that he's trying. And I'll bring you to certain information that I received from my sources, which is that the only way Idim Nangagwa knew about this coup was because he was warned by SADC. So, specifically, Zambia is said to have given that information to Idim Nangagwa that there is a coup which is being planned. So, the people who reported the coup were Zambia. I've also in the past told you that Tanzania has warned General Chuenga against doing a coup. They've also warned all the other generals to stop doing a coup. So Pollard is important because Pollard is the way in which Idim Nangagwa is showing SADC that I'm trying to do dialogue with the opposition and Nelson Chamisa is being a problem. And this is this this Pollard is important because the people that are in Poland they obviously have links in communication channels. So of all those twenty three people, someone knows someone in SADC, and this is how this information is leaking back to Idim Nangagwa that other people are trying to do a coup, and SADC will never allow a coup in Zimbabwe for that reason. So we have a, a difficult situation for the people that are trying a coup. We are in 2020 already. The next election is in 2023, which means there's basically no time for change to happen now. We, we are almost there. We are going to be in election mode very, very soon. And so the, the dynamics are going to change. As we move closer to the election, a coup will become less and less likely. And Idim Nangagwa's position is going to become stronger and stronger. And if I'm not careful, especially the opposition guys, they will be caught unprepared in 2023, hoping that someone will do a coup and they'll be GNU. So, very difficult situation, but very important revelation. Someone tried a coup in November 2019, just a month ago. Well, a month or so, less than 60 days ago. But this information just coming out now. We're going to be certainly getting more details. And as we go into 2020, early parts of 2020, something is going to happen. If it doesn't happen in 2020, it will never happen. Right, thank you very much for watching. And please, if you're watching this on our WhatsApp channel, forward this to as many people as possible. And also like our YouTube channel and our Facebook channel. Thank you very much.